I'm Jim Collison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. Our Gallup office is in Sydney, Australia, as well as our office in Singapore. This is Gallup's Called the Coach, recorded on June 5th or June 6th, depending on your time zone, 2017. Call the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you have a question during this webcast, we do have a live chat room available for you, which we do for all our uh, videos we have available. Right below the main video window, just look down right there. And uh, if you want to log in, bottom left-hand corner says log in. Choose that. Choose the guest account. Put your name in and hit submit, and you are in, and you can ask us questions live during the program. If you have questions during, uh, if you have questions after the webcast, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. And don't forget, if you want to listen to the recorded version, you, we have these all available on our coaches blog. So you can head over to coaching dot gallup dot com or use the contact form right there on the live page. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center. It's GallupStrengthCenter dot com for all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources and training needs. You can also catch the video on both streaming and I mentioned this uh, earlier. Downloadable audio. It's all available for you on our coaches blog. Again, coaching dot gallup dot com. And Lena Felter is our host today and works as a learning solutions consult consultant with Gallup in our Sydney, Australia office. And I'm a little jealous. Great to uh, great to have you on. Welcome to another Called the Coach. I wish I was in Sydney with you. <laughs> Every time we do a show, we talk about getting you over here, and eventually it's going to happen. We'll do Someday. a live Called to Coach from here. I'm sure of it. Absolutely. Someday indeed. <laughs> great to see you. Yeah, good to be here. Um, and welcome to my guest, Victor Seat. Victor uh, lives in Singapore. He is a co-founder of the Strength School, and that's a Singapore-based consultancy that brings strengths to all sectors of business, education, and the government. Um, Besides Singapore, he's also worked in Hong Kong, China, India, really across Asia with his strengths, bringing his strengths workshops. He's also the creator of a very cool, innovative game called the Game of Life, which he uses with his clients. Um, and it really is a, is a, it's an experiential game that's designed to help participants learn how to integrate strengths into decision making. And I think one of the things I most admire about the work that Victor does at Strength School is he is all about application, all about pointing it to development and how do we bring strengths sort of from the discovery stage into um, the development stage and, and, and into bringing it into to, to life day in and day out. Um, he's also a Gallup certified coach. Uh, his top five are activator, communication, strategic, self-assurance, and command. So Victor, welcome to Call to Coach. So pleased to finally get you on the show. Thank you. Like it's really an honor. Like, um... Just very happy to just talk about strengths with you guys, like right, um, here on Call the Coach. Yeah, absolutely. I was just telling Jim that um that you and I were together almost exactly a year ago today when we were at the first Strengths and Education Summit that you guys held in Singapore, and that was a fantastic experience. And I got to see um, Strength School in action there, and and things like you know your your amazing game of life, which we should talk about um perhaps a little later on. But can you tell the audience a bit about Strength School and 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 how long you guys have been up and running? Running, how you came together and, and, and how you've grown over the last few years. So um, I founded Strength School together with my partner, Jason, right, um, and we came together maybe uh, just like over three years ago. And we just, we, we, we got to know each other and we, we found so many uh, things that we kind of like could resonate with when we kind of dialogue with each other and say, hey, how about just joining together in this partnership? So we're really very passionate. We really so our vision, strength school, and uh, it's really to see every generation, really seeing them uh, live up their full potential, and uh, we find that we do that in different ways. So to us, it's from the young all the way to the old, and um, I'm very happy just to have strength dialogue. I think it's the every part of my life. Right? I go everywhere, even in my recent trip to Sydney. <laughs> You know, I just went there for a holiday or two couples and I just just talk about strengths and then my wife is just always sometimes she has to stop me. <laughs> so anyway, coming back to strength school. <laughs> so we found a strength school and then over the last couple of years, uh, we kind of like just from the two of us now, we grew to a, a team of um, eight of us. Right. And uh, so all 
all of us are certified um, Gallup certified coaches and um, so we have different teams uh, um, focusing on different sectors and we, we enjoy that that journey and uh, the most recent one is bring it to the public space uh, in Singapore where anyone in the public can kind of like sign up for our causes and um, I just did one uh, yesterday and, and it was uh, it was great it was a it was a new experience for me most of the time we do it for organizations so yesterday was the first time just a whole group of people uh, from the public and signing up you know and uh, it's it's like a meetup right um, just like just really a strengths finder we did a full day course for them and I'm just really excited to see this development new development for us yeah yeah, absolutely. It seems to me um, that you guys have done an enormous amount of creative and innovative work in, in, in the work that you've done. And I know it cuts across industry, so I know you've done a lot of work with the government sector in education, most certainly, both primary, secondary, and even higher education, right? And um, yeah. and then uh, and then faith-based organizations as well. And I see often on Facebook or LinkedIn, I see things come up saying, you know, you're doing a, another workshop that day on couples or, you know, on, on springing strings into marriage or, um, you know, perhaps it's about students uh, identifying study skills or how they can, you know, how teachers can be better leaders in the classroom. So very specific outcomes from those one day sessions, but all about strengths and the strengths approach. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you've created these workshops and where you, you know, just how you decided on the menu of offerings that you have? Well, that's a good question. I think when Jason and I started, we decided that um, we will just focus on strengths and uh, we're not, we decided we'll not do anything else. But we, we made it a point that uh, using strengths, we're going to bring it to every different sector and our focus will not just be stopping at the discovery stage, but moving into application. So, so we've done for Fortune 500 companies like uh, and different MNCs, government, um, in, in the education. And I think the first year was really studying, understanding the needs of our different clients. And slowly, I mean, our content, we start to develop uh, application tools. So like what you just talked about, um, so maybe that's me, an activator. I can't. I find it uncomfortable when just someone just tells me that, oh, I got my profile and I'm just happy about that. You now my next question would be, so what are you doing about it? <laughs> How are you applying that into your life? Right, and then through the, the last couple of years, uh, it, I wouldn't say that immediately from day one, we got it all sorted out, right? Uh, over the years, we developed applications. So, and that, that's, that's key for us and for me. And uh, a lot of times when we do a workshop for our client, we really ask them, at the end of the day, what do you hope to have your, your team? You know, what do you hope to have them take away? Which, which area of application is most important to you? So for me, that's a key question. Um, and I guess that's, that's why maybe I'm an activator. Mm. Yeah. So for me, myself as well, uh, so, so application into my own personal life is extremely important for me. So do you find that that you have a lot of repeat customers? So you, you guys go out and you do these one-day workshops for an organization or even now in the sort of the public arena. Do you find that people want the next step? Um, or do you or is it generally just sort of the introduction that you're starting with? So we have a lot of repeat um, customers. Maybe in, in our workshops, um, for me, it's not just about covering lots of content. I mean, but strength is pretty big. Like there's so many things, so many areas that can be covered. So I think for us, it's to be focused on one application area. And then we find them coming back because they realize as, as they apply that there's so much more. They ask for coaching and then they ask like, how, how can I grow um, certain talents? How can I just bring them to the area of strength? And um, so repeat customers for us, it's, uh, it could be a couple of months later. It could be a year later. Uh, we find that yeah, a lot of uh, revisiting. We call them revisiting clients, yeah. and uh, very happy to always go deeper with them. And is that typically uh, you mentioned coaching? Is it usually a one-on-one -on -one scenario, or are you, uh, you know, a series of of coaching sessions around their strengths geared towards application, or you know, what are your next steps? So, so as there's people in the audience who are thinking about you know, how they're going to be Gallup certified coaches and how they're going to build their, their consultancy or their business. Um, what sort of the, when these 
for when these initial clients revisit, um, what are you, what, what is your next step with them typically? I, I think for us, um, of course, uh, the, it, always de it always depends on so the, the budget and how much, how, how willing they are to go, but we make it a point um, that, um, that we coach at least the team leader, right? And, and that's how we build that in. I mean, it's just not, a, not just a workshop, but after the workshop, we always build in uh, like a coaching, right? And what we try to help the team leader to understand is that just in the day to day, how do you take it forward? And um, that you can come back to us for advice. I'm very happy to, to always give different inputs and uh, help them to also understand. Because sometimes at the, at the end of one workshop, we can find out like, uh, how, how the team functions. We give different insights. So sometimes we see that coaching session as a debrief. And part of it is giving new insights and uh, give some handles. And, and we do that. And um, so that's, that's part of the journey where we help clients um, to decide, well, these are the areas that you can think about um, maybe the following year, right? Uh, or, or a couple of months later when you decide um, how you're going to just strengthen them in terms of their understanding and their application. Mm -hmm. So we, we do that quite a bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, especially in the businesses and in government. Yep. Okay. Um, turning it for a moment to the education sector and the work that you're doing there, um, I, I went on to your website, um, which uh, I would encourage the the guests to look at as well, because I think it's really it's really well done, and it shows how you've got the the different offerings that you have and 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 what those are geared towards. I love the the framework or model that you had for the genius for the students yeah. and their genius, and it looks like there's different modules. Um, can you talk a little bit about what the genius is and what the modules are? So when we work with schools, and I'm, I'm talking specifically about Singapore schools, mm -hmm. uh, we find that um, just time is a huge uh, limitation, right? Uh, the students are really packed with, with uh, lots of uh, curriculum they need to cover, lots of activities. And so every time we go into uh, a, a school and then we, we talk with the teachers, we try to find out, like, is there a specific area right? they would like to, to use strengths towards or to aim for. So again, coming back to the aiming portion. So I think it's important for us um, to, to find an area. And as we dialogue with different schools, we realize that uh, it's, it's not a standard kind of a product. Right? Uh, it's not a standard area. And every school has their own focus. So uh, through that, over the years, I think we, we kind of come up with a different kind of, like, in this kind of offerings. So it's always uh, a certain, maybe the, a short, uh, three hours that we cover foundations and that's more of the discovery um, and then after that we'll focus on areas of um, application so we have we have uh, the study genius where how we use strengths specifically to aim towards um, um, developing strategies in the area for people to, for students uh, in the area of studies and then we have uh, we have leadership genius that's in the area of application for leadership so there are a lot of student leaders or students or leaders that, um, that, that they have in clubs or activities or um, co-curriculum, kind of like a sports. So, so there's student leaders as well. And so leadership tends to aim towards um, this group of individuals. And then we have uh, Team Genius. So Team Genius focus on like a lot of um, the schools, they focus on project work. Right? How do you work as a team? Just right within your classroom, within your project group. So different offerings, and we have a whole range of that. Uh, includes sometimes like a, a s special ones where some teachers might say, hey, I, I want to train my, my students to be able to do effective public speaking. You know, how do we motivate students to, to overcome that, that stage fright, to be able to stand up there and, and to speak and to present themselves confidently. So we, we help people to focus not on your fears, but using strengths to overcome, right? And be able to do well in these areas that is important to them. When you're talking about a, a competency, like, like public speaking, a skill like that, yeah. how do you use strengths to, to, uh, to help them be better in that space? So, um, I mean, if you could just give me an example from, from the work that you've been doing in that, that little genius module on the public speaking, do you have any clients or anyone that you can think of or a story that you can tell about how you help them use their strengths specifically in that sort of area? Well, I, I, I guess um, 
a lot of times um, it's about first overcoming their own limitation. So a lot of students is like, well, I, I don't think I'm those kind of a student who can stand in front and speak confidently. So they think that to be able to stand up there, they need to be like a 10 point 10, but it's not true. So how I help them to is when I coach them to understand now, if you have, let's say a team like a restorative, right? How do you frame yourself speaking and, and sharing with others now? Now what, what is an, an issue that you want to present, right? What's a problem and um, how, how, you, how can you help you to share something that at the end people can find, find solutions, right? It, it could be a short presentation sharing about a particular problem and then that, that you can provide one or two simple handles. And sometimes that itself frames them to say, hey, I can do that. I, I think I can share with my own classmates about this issue I'm facing and how I overcome. It could be a simple personal story about how they overcome. And, it, and we find that often just, just that, that um, um, going onto the stage, being able to do that, and the, cl the classmates cheering them on, you know, and, and after they completed the sense of fulfillment, mm. right? It's, they might not be like, oh, wow, I'm a 10 point 10 speaker, but they can go back and say, hey, I've done it, right? Uh, and I probably can keep doing that and practice. Yeah. So I think that we're not coaching people to, to be the, like a, a great public speaker. You know, most people just, it's just about overcoming their own comfort, right? Um, overcoming that, that, that fright, the fear that they have. Yes. And as coaches, we can do a lot in, in helping them. Uh, in a sense, it's, it's in a simple way, teaching people to motivate themselves. Yes, that's right. Like, and, um, yeah, and framing it from a different perspective, yeah. isn't it? So that's great. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yeah and, and I think that's one key um, aspect when we do that. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the game of life. Um, I, I saw this in action when I was in Singapore this time last year for the first Strengths in Education Summit in Singapore. Um, and yeah. it was a, a room of about 150 students that were moving about a million miles a, a, mo a minute <laughs> and, and totally engaged with that learning process. But can you explain that to, to, to Jim and to the audience? Um, talk a little bit about the game of life, how you created it, what the purpose of it was and how you use it today. So um, it, this idea came basically out of a, a board game that I was playing. And I was just thinking like, a, you know, in a board game, you can have 10 people playing the game at the same time. So I'm just trying to think in terms of, can I bring it alive, right? And maybe I need uh, facilitators, right? And, and so starting to, to think about that, I, I sat down with someone who had ideation, leveraging on that, that strength, and then we started to brainstorm. And I think maybe I'm the activator. I am, and I'm concerned about how, how can this be, be alive. And in the end, the end product was coming up with many different kinds of stations. I call it live stations. Like, uh, so we can have like a, we have a home, which is like we all of us have a family, right? And there's a school and there's work. And I, I bring people through stages of life, right? And they progress basically through playing different station games where there are activities designed for them. At the end, the whole idea is that they themselves will come back into a place where they debrief. What did I do? You know, and um, how did I use my strengths to hit those objectives? How did I use my strengths to finish those activities? So some of the activities might be challenging. And then we kind of like have facilitators encourage them and say, hey, I think you can do it. Like think about how you want to do it. Think, think about using your strengths to do it. And it's very interesting, I, and I have so many different students sharing with me their own experience. Let me just give you an example, right? I have a, a person, let's say, have a learner. At the end, they, they sat down with me and say, wow, like um, the way I played the game was first, I observe. What do people do? Like, uh, how do they play those activities? Right, and I kind of like um, pick it up, and I feel like uh, maybe I can do better than these people, right? And they learn. They learn from other people playing the game. They, they just start by observing, right? And, and, and that's interesting for me, right? And I have people like coming to a place where they say, hey, I'm, I'm the guy with harmony, right? Uh, playing the game alone, it's like, it's not as exciting for me. And, and there's, the rules of the game is you, you don't have to play it for yourself. You can play with a group of friends. So you can bring a whole group of people and trying to complete the activity as a group together. And often we find people like includers, and people with harmony doing that. 
and they enjoy it. Sometimes they feel motivated. I think in life, that's that's how they, they do life as well. You know, like uh, they have always a group of colleagues, close friends, the kind of journey with. So that, that entire game of life is a picture to help them to envision, hey, when I grow up, especially when I do it for young students, when I grow up, it, it gives them a taste of how life it's like. So the main key points is debriefing on their decision points, their choices they make. So for example, like uh, with someone, you know, it's built very relationally, but somehow decide to go into the different activities, different stations and doing it alone, they find that the, the engagement level is low. And at the end, they kind of think that, hey, why didn't I do it with my friends? Right, and, and that will engage you know, those, those talent teams that they have. And, and so sometimes that, that learning itself causes them to ponder that reflection. It's helpful for them to learn how to progress in, their, in what they're gonna do. So uh, I, I love the game of life. It's designed uh, in such a way whereby um, it moves the talent teams from the discovery right into the uh, application, right? Where they can think back, am I conscious about using my strength? Right, uh, is, it, is it automatic for me or am I maybe sometimes influenced by just watching my friends, trying to be like other people rather than focusing on what I have. So, yeah. so that's, um, I don't know, I mean, I, I can keep going on to <laughs> stop me, right? No, I, look, I it was, you know, when I was there and I saw it, I, the, it seemed like, you know, they would earn points or something or money you know, do, doing different tasks and they had the opportunity to either be, go down yeah. the entrepreneurial path or go down a business, yeah. you know, work for someone else path. And and you could see all of these kids, some of them knew exactly that that's what they wanted to do, right? And and, and others yes, maybe exactly. were just sort of exploring it for the first time. But I, I think that the, the whole concept of taking a board game like that and you know, bringing it to life um, and applying strengths and really as you say, shifting from the the, the, the naming to the aiming is uh, just such an innovative way to do it. So I thought it was really well done. In the work that you've done at String School, are there any other innovations or creative solutions that you that you've come up with that you feel most proud of and you feel have worked really well? Um, yeah, definitely. I, I let me share something and let me pull out like um, so every workshop that I do like. Um, so I, I really love, I, I designed this like colorful text. So everybody gets a top five and it looks like this. So one, even a simple thing in a workshop that I do, it's like, let's say, I pick a partner, right? And two persons sits down there and look at each other's strengths and just, just talk about now real life situation. So let's say, let's say this is me and this is Mailing, who's one of my colleagues. In a real life context, in the actual project that we're doing, Right, I make them think about a really a current situation. Now, how can we look at now our ten teams and and work on that project together? So, so I'm asking, I make, I'm just using this tag, and I love it. Like I don't need like a huge complex tool, you know, just your badges itself. And and we think about now, how can like my activator partner your responsibility? Let's talk. And um, I do that a lot, like in a workshop, and then. And that, that discussion really comes alive because people really think about a current project that they have. And like when I look at this batch, I'm thinking to myself, well, this is quite simple. I can bring it anywhere. And um, so they, they keep it. Some of them really like bring it even into their own project meetings. You know, just be, be conscious about leveraging on each other's talent. Uh, I make them talk about, hey, now look at what we have. And... Uh, what a possible tension that might arise just because of how we are wired. And, and especially in a workshop setting, I find that people are um, disarmed and they find that they are more willing to explore um, possible areas that they feel like they might clash before it comes out you know, in a real project. I think that awareness helps them to understand um, how they can work better with one another. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's something we love. Um, one of like uh, people ask me like is it necessary i maybe for me i, I love the colors and, yeah. and, and so this is something i'm proud of um, and, yeah. and i want people to wear that this and know that hey you can be um, very dominant in a particular domain or you could be like a, a cross cut across different domain where the power lies and it's about respect and it's about like understanding and and, and learning how to leverage it each other's you know 
like great tools that we're going to have. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I like that you keep it simple. Like you know, you keep to the foundations, the basics, and and but you just you take it deeper than most people do, and continue to aim it at at you know practicalities and how you can use it today. One of the things that I thought was brilliant that you guys have done at Strength School is that you have um, figured out that. The, in Singapore, um, the, the, there is a, a government grant that is allowed um, for Singaporeans to every year they, they get a, a learning and development grant, right? Called um, Skills Future, and and you've been um, you've gone through the process, uh, which I imagine would have been quite laborious, um, to align your workshops with the uh, the, re the requirements to become Skills Future approved, which then allows obviously for 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 your courses to be able to be covered by those government grants. That process, I imagine, would love to hear about it and and how you went through that process, and then um, also. A, have you done the same sort of thing in education? So aligning your workshops with any, you know, development uh, required by, for teachers, you know, how, where, you know, how did you get to that, that grant approval sort of process and, and, and where are you taking it from here? So uh, that's a very good question. Uh, when Jason and I, you know, we do a lot of uh, workshops both for companies and, and, and education, but most of them, and, and I'll be honest to say that they, they belong to organizations or teams. So and but in our own kind of a circle, we realized that there are many, many people who are interested to learn more about strengths. And as an individual, all they could do was to maybe get their profiling done. Um, but it, uh, in terms of like uh, opportunities to learn more, to go deeper into strengths, uh, it was challenging for them. Um, and, and so one of the key things that Jason and I decided to, to work towards was getting ourselves skills future approved. But by anyone from the public, as long as you're a Singaporean above 25 years old, they, they, the government gives some kind of a grant for people to upskill themselves and learn more, um, uh, and and learn more about learn more knowledge and skills to to be to, to grow in your competency. Um, and so we 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 work hard at that. I think it's about really uh, going back. We we have to design a lot of um, brochures. Like um, and, and the whole course outline, the objectives, we went through many, many different rounds of application, right, just to be able to tell the government, okay, this course that we're going to cover, these are the key objectives, and when people come and they can use their strengths, we'll do a profiling, and then at the end, this, this will be the objectives that are met. It's not easy. I, it's just a simplified thing that I'm sharing with you. We went through many rounds of discussion before we get, we got a few of our workshops approved. So uh, yesterday we had our first round, right? Um, where the, the, there were just quite a few number of um, people from the public signing up. Uh, we managed to, to rent a room, right? And, and so I was proud, I was conducting that workshop. Uh, so you, you, you have people coming in, um, not really knowing each other. I said, hey, and then you get to interact with them. They have those, of course, they say, I'm gonna bring my friends along. Right, this is a public workshop. Anyone could sign up, and so there are, pe there are people who learn better when there are friends around. And so it was great. I had a great time. Right, uh, and I had a lot of feedback. They're saying uh, it was interesting because I get to talk to people that I, I didn't know of. Right, and to hear about how they think they apply strengths into that line, and just that added perspective. Right, um, it's it's different for me. It was interesting because I do most of my workshop in teams in organizations. So it's the first time I need to frame myself to know that, hey, these are the group of people who might not know one another, right? And, and how do I approach that? How do I help them understand their own talent teams? Mm. And, um, and, and just learning the different areas of application. Yeah, so it, it was exciting for me. I'm sure I will get better <laughs> later <laughs> on and just, just keep improving. Like, um, sure. not very not very used to doing a public workshop, if I, I would say that, but it, it went great. And um, How many people but, uh, did you have sh turn up, Victor? Yesterday, yeah. uh, it was just a, a group of uh, 12 people. Yeah, yeah. Right, a, a small group. So it was, um, so we always have a, a, a limit, like, um, yeah. because I, I, I personally don't like to conduct like a mass yeah. kind of a workshop, yeah. So 12 was great for me, a lot of time for questions, and answers and a lot of interactive activities that I designed. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, managed to get all twelve to interact. Yeah. I think that, that that was that was great. 
Yeah, fantastic. Um, I know one of the I noticed one of the courses that you're doing on the public courses is is um, the millennials retention or something about ret retaining millennials. Um, do, what lessons have you learned from working with different millennials across the industries in Singapore? Wow, what lesson do I learn? I, I think one, you know, Gallo had always had this uh, question, right? Uh, at work, do I have the opportunity to do what I do best every day? I think somehow, I think that question, right? It's so important to a millennial, maybe more so than uh, uh, pe pe people who are in an you know, older range, the age group. But I find that this question, a lot of millennials are asking, hey, when, when I do what I do, am I using my strengths? Like, uh, am I feeling engaged? That, that the whole idea of engagement is so important for them. Now, of course, there are many other factors, but somehow when I, when I do it for this group, I find that question keeps coming out a lot. Like, and, um, so, so when someone is able to answer like, hey, I, I feel like uh, my strengths are being engaged. I feel like my colleagues know what I'm good at. My, my superior knows what I'm good at. They're, it's more likely Right, that they they feel that uh, this is a great job to have. So conversations, conversations are, are not just based on like a half yearly review or annual review. It has to be constant. And uh, I think millennials look at that. If yes, I, I use the word engagement very broadly, but I think it's that conversations um, every day that that happens and uh, that that's important to them. So even for me. Um, me and Jason, like we lead a whole team. I would say like our whole team are millennials. <laughs> so we have to have very, be very intentional into engaging them on a daily basis, um, asking them about their strengths, how they're using it, and what challenges comes out, and um, being able to catch them doing the right thing. You know, and, and saying, hey, I think I saw you using your restorative and you fix that issue right there and, and that was really helpful for the team and uh so stuff like that needs to be so uh, quick and so so i'm learning to be like a uh, a boss of a millennial as well yeah no. <laughs> like, and, uh, i don't think it's that it's easy trying to grow in that um, so a lot of the workshops is it's like a kind of like a shared from that perspective that i'm i'm doing that myself right and mm -hmm. all the mistakes that i made you know, and, and what the good things I can grow into. Yeah, right. interesting. It certainly aligns with the research that Gallup did on millennials. So looking for, you know, the, the opportunities to do best every day um, and to bring their strengths. Um, so certainly we see that in our research as well. But I think that's brilliant that you're, um, you know, focusing it in that space. So when you go in and you work with clients on an ongoing basis, mm. do you guys um, focus a lot on proving ROI for them? Do you have ways of measuring the, 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 you know, developing a scorecard and developing, you know, measuring the sort of impact that your work within the organization is having? Is that something that you have invested a lot of time and energy around or, or not so much at this stage? Um, I think that's been in, in development, right? And, and that's, that's something we've been working on uh, a lot of times. I think, Maybe coming back, some, something that I share a lot with my clients is that uh, um, productivity. So when we stick, talk about strengths, you know, being able to increase productivity, it's not just necessarily about that, that piece of work. And, and uh, the productivity itself, when we stretch that concept wider, it's a lot about relationships, right? And how just being able to manage uh, conflicts within the team, just being able to help people understand how to work with each other better. So a lot of uh, like kind of if I use the word debrief or conversations with team leaders, it's about how they have been observing the, the state of relationship right in the team um, or even their own relationship with the people that they, they are working with, how, how they can use, use strengths uh, to coach them. So I, a lot of our kind of... Uh, um, in a sense, that measurement comes from ongoing uh, dialogue, uh, of course, with respect to specific performance indicators. And of course, every client has that differently. And that's something that uh, we're very conscious to work on for different clients. Um, but I would think about it, uh, if you ask me at this point, a key aspect when we work with team leaders, it's about helping them to know strengths can be used to aim towards, you know, that... Um, 
the behaviors, cutting down on the behaviors, you know, uh, that that can that hinders uh, even the team performance. Mm. So not just necessary individual performance. I think for coming back to team leaders, they're always very concerned about how the team is working, you know, collaborating as a group together. Mm. Um, and many of our clients um, engage us to work on that. And first they say, uh, can, can you give us like a team building a workshop, right? But when we go in deeper and deeper and we probe more, uh, the, the main concern is always about that collaboration uh, and how to get the energy up, how to get a positive energy up. And, and that, that's, that's important to them. So for us, we do a lot of even coaching, uh, sometimes even with, as a team together, or it could be with specific team members. Uh, we like to use the, uh, the balcony uh, basement, yeah. like uh, the idea. So in, in Singapore, for, for us in strength school, we use this idea of infancy maturity. So, um, and even we develop resources. Um, we, make, we make our participants reflect, right, really about their talent teams. And then we, we give them our own reference. So Jason and I, over the last couple of years, like we really interviewed like hundreds of people. and very proud to even share like a, a, our own resource that we use to coach. Maybe I'll just pull it out. Like, uh, so we have like just some uh, of our, like we call it infancy maturity cards out yeah. of a lot of interviews we do with people. So this, this is only given to them um, like after we get them to think and reflect. Right. And a lot of times they get uh, their aha moments when they realize that, hey, either like hey, the, the awareness I have, it's true. Because I compare it with these cards and the references and I find that, hey, that's, that's those negative behaviors that I need to manage. Or, or those things that I'm doing well, I need to keep doing more of these things. And so a lot of our coaching comes. Uh, so this is a great resource that we use. Uh, of course, I think, uh, you know, starting from Gallup when they, you know, when we go for the certification course and teaching us about balcony basement, that was key for me personally. And understanding how just helping people to grow in that um, can reap great you know, results. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just that's, that's important for us. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I, I look, I know that that you, outside of your professional life, you also use strengths and bring it into your personal life, both in on the home front with the family and also in your leadership position in your church, right? So certainly, yeah. bringing strengths into a faith based organization is something that we see in a lot a lot of alignment. Can you speak to to that a little bit and and talk a bit about how how you've um, done that? So yeah, definitely. I, I think for when we go into a faith-based organization, a lot of times one of the, the key, key thing, right? Uh, it's about that, at least in church, it's about the character building, right? How does someone grow in, in, in character? Like, um, and and how, does, how does someone just kind of like um, grow in resilience? And how, come, how can someone just stop um, certain behaviors it could be addictions it could be different challenges that they are facing and uh, so i'm talking about practical areas so if, when i bring it into my church i tell you, i say that hey strengths can be a um, very powerful portion to aim towards um, these areas when we, we call it broadly character building um, character strengthening and how how do we use strengths to help people build that and uh, so a lot of coaching is involved uh, again, I, I come back to helping people realize that that a lot of times they could be using their talent teams, and it's there, but using it in a not so good way, right? And uh, especially, I think in areas of fighting, um, just if I use broadly speaking, addictions in their lives, whether is it like a, you know, um, certain behaviors that we, I think in church they say is not so helpful. How how do we help young people to reduce that? I lead a whole group of leaders who oversee young people, and uh, maybe that's something I'm very passionate about. I've been a youth pastor for, before I started strength school, I was a youth pastor for close to 10 years. So very passionate about youth development. And uh, in that stage of growing up, um, like strengthening the characters, I think, so when I first became passionate about strengths, uh, actually it was seeing how strengths can help a young person build that character that was what motivates me right so sun strength school was part of that that vision as well like uh, so i would say if you 
talk ask me about how did I bring it to um, a faith based organization. So I, I started with the leaders. So no one's perfect, right? But when um, we're in church, I always teach that well, if a leader needs to walk the talk, like right? we need to to have um, not people not seeing that we are perfect, but people being able to see that as leaders we can overcome. So when um, people see that we can overcome certain challenges in our lives, you know, they will be thinking to themselves, "Hey, I can do that too," and I want that too. And so a lot of uh, mentoring takes place, uh, coaching takes place, and and I, I enjoy seeing those transformation, small ways and big ways, um, in relationship as well. Yeah, uh, so I do a lot of uh, couple coaching, uh, sometimes with my wife, and uh, we speak to different couples. Uh, maybe for me, I enjoy mentoring and uh, using strengths as well for newly wed wedded couples. And how to use strengths to strengthen their marriage. And uh, I do lots of that. Yeah. yeah excellent. That's fantastic. I, I love hearing about that. Um, Jim, uh, I think you have a question from the chat room. Yeah, we had one earlier. Um... Uh, Victor, what's from, from an age group standpoint? Kind of what's what ages when we think about uh, about students? What are you, what are your age ranges, and how do you how are you kind of handling that assessment and and working with those students? Can you give us some idea there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I work um, with uh, so in terms of age group, as young as like um, nine years or ten years old, where we use the Gallup Strengths Explorer, right? And 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 we use that profiling. And um, help. Uh, basically, when we work with a younger age group, we bring in the teachers and parents, especially, right? And and basically, it's it's not seeing that profile as like uh, boxing a kid out, but using the profile to develop and further help parents understand. Hey, your your child may be gifted in these areas. How about using you know this profile to help you understand their ways to help your child develop. Like, uh, and make them feel more fulfilled. So, so in this is the age group from above fifteen. Um, we use Strengths Finder or Strengths Quest, like, and when we work in schools, um, so that's that's something that uh, we felt like we needed to follow what Gallup advocate. So we kind of split in that in that sense. Like um, for the younger ones, we do Explorer. Um, for Strengths Finder, for students all the way from. Like fifteen years old to university students, so we use Strengths Finder, Strengths Quest. Yeah, and we'll have a new offering for you guys called Clifton Strengths for Students that's coming up here. Um, it's actually all the announcements are already out, but uh, but, a, yeah, but a new yeah. book and some new resources and and so pretty cool. One of the things when you were showing the lanyard, I, I think one of the things I've always been most impressed with, and I do a lot of call to coach, right? And I see coaches and. Europe and the United States, and I see them there in Sydney, and I see them in Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore, in India. And uh, one of the things I'm most impressed with with you guys is that you really own the materials that you get out there. And when you showed that lanyard, I think can you hold that up for me again, uh, Victor? I I want to I want to make a point. Service? No, the lanyard that you'd had the lanyard with oh, the top the five. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah. One of the things right. that I think, yeah, one of the things I think is so cool about that, and I'm I'm holding the screen on you, so just push them up to the screen so people can see them. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Awesome. One of the things I love about this, Gallup has a really boring green one. So if you've ever, if you come to training here at Gallup, and you know what I'm talking about, I it's do. green. It says Gallup <laughs> on it. Super boring, right? From Ours is standpoint. gray, even worse. <laughs> even yeah. You guys have really owned it. And, and and one of the things I'd really like to get across to our coaches sometimes is this is an area very simple. Victor, you guys don't, you spend a little time printing these and making them, but the people really own them, right? How, the, do you feel like when you're done with that, like it's more than just their name, right? This is something they're going to maybe post somewhere or have you gotten stories from people who've made those name tags more than just the name tag during the session? But have used it in other areas. Are you hearing stories like that? Yes, a lot. Right. Um, so we basically this is a size that it's um, helpful for the workshops. So we can like uh, reduce the size and people like keep it in the, even like um, at a place where it's convenient. You know, they can bring it around. We have uh, people who would we basically actively use this. You know, with uh, the, the colors, I think just add to that like the vibrancy. 
right? Um, and sometimes I, I, I feel that uh, when I work with clients, like 34 strengths is a lot to remember. So I have people telling me, hey, just thank you for the color coding. It helps me to know when I look at someone, which, which areas are so dominant and where I can you know, go to them for advice, when I can go to them for inputs. And like, uh, even though like, um, it's just colors, but like, it helps people. Right, I think add another new level of perspective and understanding into the area of the, the talent teams. Yeah, and it just it takes that name tag, which could be a boring, just a plain thing that, and it turns yeah. it into a keepsake, and it it turns it into something personal. I think for them, and it ties it back to you. And so I just I I encourage our coaches when they're it's it, sometimes we don't focus on the small things that are so important. I think and personalizing it that ties it to you that ties them to you and to what you're doing there and i think it's su su super important that they walk away one of the questions i get all the time is hey where's your template you know they they came to our training session we gave them the, the boring green one and they're like where's the template for that and i have to encourage them all the time make your own one of the mm -hmm. things i've seen a lot in india and in singapore as well is the coaches have really taken it upon themselves like the game of life to make yeah. these tools their own. I think you guys are doing that. If I were to give you a grade for doing that, it would be an A plus. Yeah. Thank you. Me. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. great. Absolutely. I just like to, add, yeah, I like to add on, I think it's sometimes we think big things, but it's really little ones. Like, um, like I'm very happy, you know, when, when and Jason came up and Jason will design that the strengths uh, mark, like, um, and just, you realize that you put it on the table and everybody is able to just using that to remember your mark and you have one, right? Like, remember? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited. So when I got it, <laughs> just, just using that. And there, there's like, one, um, yeah, there's one sold in the U S too. One. Yeah. So that's, so every, we like that. And then, and, uh, the, the one in the U S works and uh, we're proud of that. This is like maybe an Asia representation yeah. <laughs> for us. <laughs> this one has Singlish you know, and, on it. It has the Singlish equivalent, yeah. so it's even better. This is, <laughs> this is a Singapore product, right? That we use it and localize into a language. And then we, we have people just looking at this and say, I, I own my strengths just because like I feel like I can I can see them visually, I can I can drink coffee with them. And so for me, it, it's not just the products, it's the whole point of making strengths. Uh, infused into the lifestyle right and and uh, different things that we hope we're able to do now our latest um, product coming up it's like a tote bag you know and uh, and we're saying that okay we're going to try right and find every way to to make people own <laughs> their top five at least yeah and, uh, so yeah. that's important for us creativity as well as that, that claiming piece you know and uh, finding different ways to do that Mm -hmm. I, will, I will show you when our pull back rack is done. It's like that. You know, Jason is, uh, that's for me, tapping on his ideation. He loves that creative thing. That's awesome. Yeah, Victor, I, I do want to add one real quick. I do want to say one thing, though. Sure. It's, you know, mugs and, and T-shirts and handbags, those are all great. But you guys have taken a really simple concept like the name tag and made it awesome. Mm -hmm. And so even some of our coaches, you know, they're like, oh, I don't want to get into merchandising or – you know, I don't want to have to stock inventory or I don't want to have to advertise it on a website. And that's great. You don't have to. Like you can take something as simple as a name tag. Own it. Help them to own it. Make it theirs. Be creative with it. And it, it, if you're not creative, find someone who is, right? You said you said in the very first part of it, like I, I, I needed some ideas. So I, I partnered with somebody with ideation, right? You said that. And so it's just super important. So, and thanks for letting me jump in there. I know we're running yeah. short on Oh yeah, look, we'll we'll have to bring it to a close. Um, so so really, Victor, is there anything short and sweet that I've forgotten to to bring up that you think is important to say before we close the show? Well, um, no, I think we pretty much have it all covered. I would just say basically and encourage everyone. Uh, maybe it's my own passion. So strengths uh, to increase. It's so important when clients hear this that strengths can be used to powerfully increase people's productivity. And performance, but it's not more than just the task, but it's also the, the relationship. And, uh, and it's so intertwined, and, and we need to be able to, to work on that a lot more. Right? And I feel that uh, that's something that's lacking in this generation. Right? We're moving into that technology platform a lot. So I feel that the, the potential for using strengths to grow in the area of interactive relationship. 
right? It's so important now in teams and and in families, like in schools. And I think that would that would be something that I I would just want to encourage the coaches, right, to to keep using strengths for that. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks so much, Victor, for representing the Strength School and being with us today. It's really been great to have you as a guest and and looking forward to your next um, uh, Strength Summit in Singapore next year. Um, uh, really looking forward to that as well. So well done. Thank you. Right. Victor, thanks indeed. I'll remind folks if you want to get if you've got questions, you're listening to this. Uh, Victor is available on Facebook and our Facebook groups and you can just type it in his name will show up and you're you're you are free to ask questions. it's okay right if they if they contact you via facebook victor it'd be all right if they did yeah, that yeah, sure. i didn't ask yeah, i just no. <laughs> assumed uh but you both you and jason have been um very um uh very open on what you do on on facebook and have had some great ideas and so i just encourage you if you're a coach and you're struggling a little bit to get some of those ideas have a look at what those guys are, are doing in singapore and really around the world right you're you're based in Singapore. Just name a few other countries, though, that you've been working in. Uh, I've been working in, in, in Hong Kong and China. China. I, I'm by bilingual as well, so I do it in Mandarin, like uh, in India, like uh, in Thailand. So just name some of these countries. And uh, really lovely to just travel around. I'm looking to go to Australia as well one day, not just for holiday, and like uh, and US. And I want to attend the Strength Summit as well, Jim. Mm -hmm. See you live in person. <laughs> it'd be it'd be great. We're we're getting ready for the July 2017 summit, 17th, 18th, and 19th of July. So if you haven't signed up for that, you might want to do that as well. But uh, Victor, we'll look forward to seeing you here at some point, and maybe I'll look forward to seeing both of you as I make my way over there. So yeah. we'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center. Just GallupStrengthCenter.com. Send us your questions or comments if you like to be a guest blogger. You got something you like to say in about four or six hundred words around. Strengths, we are taking those as well. Send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Put guest blogger in the subject line, and we will can't take them all, but we will consider that as you send that in. You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this program, as well as all the past ones that we've done, including all of our social resources that are available at the resources tab in our coaches blog, coaching.gallup.com. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup certified strengths coach, Victor mentioned that a few times. You can see a list of all our courses that lead to those certifications. They're available on our courses page. We don't make this too difficult. It's just courses.gallup.com. And if you have any questions, you can send us an email to that coaching address, coaching at gallup.com. Someone will get right back to you no matter where you live in the world. If you are a certified uh, strengths coach, I want to just let you know that we've got some kits available for you. Our digital kits are available um, for you. If you are certified, we have some special pricing on those, and we're try just trying to get that word out. That pricing will end right before the summit that we were talking about. And so if you have not uh, gotten that information yet, send me an email, jim underscore collison at gallup.com, and we'll get that out to you. If you found this helpful, we'd ask that you'd share it. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. We'll look forward to another call to coach. And with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.